is a particular prophet of Allah whom the Quran gives a huge amount of attention to. Not only do we know about his adult years as a prophet, but we know about him as a child. We even know about the events that led up to his birth. We know about his mother, his brother, his sister, his father-in-law, his wife. We even know the very dowry, the mahr that he paid for marriage. Mentioned around 183 times in the book of Allah, and this is not in vain, across 25 passages of the Quran. This is none other than the Prophet of Allah, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And there are three descriptions that Allah Almighty gives to the Prophet of Allah, Musa, that were not given to any other prophet in the Quran. The first of them, Allah said about him, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي I have cast the garment of love over you. Meaning everyone who saw him loved him, according to one of the two interpretations. The second unique description to Musa, where Allah said to him, وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي so that you will be nurtured under my eye. And the third unique description given to this Nabiul Kareem, Honorable Prophet, is where Allah said about him, nafsi. I have prepared you for myself, Allah said to him. What type of human being will a person become when he is prepared by Allah to be for Allah? The outcome is Prophet Musa alayhi salam. A man whose essence and his ambitions and his yearnings and his existence was all for Allah and by Allah and to Allah. No part of Musa was for the world of this dunya. Shaykh al-Sa'adi, he said in the tafsir of this ayah, I have prepared you for myself. He said, if a human being wants to prepare another mortal human being whom he loves and wants to raise him, nurture him, foster him to reach the levels of perfection, this person will use all of their resources and all of their efforts to help them achieve that level. He said, what therefore do you think Allah, Al-Qawi, Al-Aziz, the most able, what he will do for a person whom he wants to bring to the highest levels of perfection, I have prepared you for myself. When did Musa alayhi salam hear these words? He heard these words from Allah Jalla Jalaluhu during one of the loneliest periods in his life. When him and his wife were pushed to their physical limits, traveling the earth all by themselves with basic provisions just enough to keep them alive. Lost for direction, they see a glimmer of light. Musa says to his wife, Um Kuthu, wait here for a moment. I see a glimmer of light, fire. Perhaps I will bring you a torch of fire from it. Or maybe someone will just give us some guidance to help us navigate this terrain. Unbeknown to Musa, however, he was not making his way to a fire. He was being called by Allah Jalla Jalaluhu to stand in the sacred valley of Tuwa to speak to Malikul Muluk, the king of kings, the owner of sovereignty and the possessor of all dominion, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. He stands and he hears the voice of Ar-Rahman Jalla Jalaluhu saying to him, Ya Musa, O oh Musa, Innani an Allah, it is me Allah. And now all of a sudden Musa alayhi salam receives closure, answers that he needed all throughout his life. He had suffered. And up until this moment, he had no idea why all of this suffering came onto him. He was born as a male child and in the law of the Pharaoh of Egypt, every male baby was worthy of execution. He was then separated from his mother at the age of suckling to be raised in a home that is not his. 
His sister would walk the bank and go to the palace of the Pharaoh and say, I know someone who can breastfeed this baby. And his mother would be reunited with Musa. Then Musa would become a man and would accidentally kill someone. Now he is a fugitive, on the run, wanted by the authorities, dead or alive. He is escaping the country in terror. Then he would find a wife to marry. And the mahr, the dowry, was 10 years worth of arduous labor. Why all of this suffering? He needed answers. And now as he stares into the evening night sky, looking above him and hearing the voice of the glorious Ar-Rahman, Jalla Jalaluhu, answers are finally given to him. What does Musa hear? He hears these following words documented by the Quran. So you can imagine it and benefit from its treasure. He hears, قَالَ قَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ سُؤْلَكَ يَا مُوسَىٰ O Musa, we have responded to your request. وَلَقَدْ مَنَنَّا عَلَيْكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَىٰ And we have conferred our favor upon you yet again. إِذْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّكَ مَا يُوحَىٰ When we sent inspiration to your mother, أَنِ اقْذِفِيهِ فِي التَّابُوتِ Saying to your mom, place the baby in the cot. فَقْذِفِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ Then place the cot in the river. فَلْيُلْقِهِ الْيَمْ بِالسَّاحِ Then the river will take him to the shore. يَأْخُذْهُ عَدُوٌ لِي وَعَدُوٌ لَهُ Where an enemy of his and an enemy of mine will take him, the Pharaoh. وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي And I have cast the garment of love over you. وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي So that you will be nurtured under my eye. إِذْ تَمْشِي أُخْتُكَ فَتَقُولُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ مَنْ يَكْفُلُهُ Remember when your sister, she followed you and she said to them, Shall I not tell you who can take care of this baby? فَرَجَعْنَاكَ إِلَىٰ أُمِّكَ Then we return you back to your mother. كَيْ تَقَرَّ عَيْنُهَا وَلَا تَحْزَنْ So that her eye can rest and she would not grieve. وَقَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا And remember Musa when you killed someone فَنَجَّيْنَاكَ مِنَ الْغَمْ But we saved you from retaliation. وَفَتَنَّاكَ فُتُونَ And we tested you with severe tests. فَلَبِثْتَ سِنِينَ فِي أَهْلِ مَدِيَنْ Then Musa you spent many years with the people of Madian. ثُمَّ جِئْتَ عَلَىٰ قَدَرِي يَا مُوسَىٰ Then you came to this place at the decree time. وَاصْطَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِي And I have prepared you for myself. So now he understood. All of his suffering in his life was not in vain, in waste. It was a preparation for this moment to become a prophet of Allah. And his heart finally settles. Now as a Muslim, when you hear this story, and you have read it before, you ask yourself the question, how can I be a person like Musa, whom Allah prepares by himself to be for himself? I would love to be this person, whom Allah guides and helps and nurtures and supports against enemies and gives answers and gives him security on the day of judgment and the highest guidance of Jannah. How can I be a person who is prepared by Allah for Allah? I share with you five signs. Signs that your suffering as a Muslim is not going to waste and your sacrifice will be thanked by Allah Jalla Jalaluh. Five signs and we take them from the biography of Musa alayhi salam. Who better? Sign number one, measure yourself against these five. You have an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. This was Musa. When he came to learn of a man who has more knowledge of him in some things, he said, La Abrah, I'm not going to stop traveling. Hatta abluga majma al Bahrain till I arrive at the junction of the two seas. Aw amdiya hukuba, even if it takes me many years, I will find this man and I will learn from him. And when he came to his mentor, who was less than him in status, but he has some knowledge, he said, Hal ala mimma Do you mind if I accompany you to learn some of the sound judgment that Allah has given you? Allahu Akbar. So this is sign number one to measure yourself against. Are you a man, a woman chosen by Allah to be for Allah? Tell me about your thirst for knowledge. May yuridillahu bihi khayra. يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينَ Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. Sign number two. You have a strong commitment to ibadah, worship, in all of its forms. 
The very first words Musa heard from Allah Jalla Jalaluhu in that sacred valley of Tuwa was Fa'budni, worship me. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ And establish the prayer for my remembrance. That's sign number two to measure yourself against. What type of abid worshipper are you? Become an exemplar worshipper of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. When people are eating and drinking, you are fasting. When people are sleeping at night, you are standing in salah. When people are gossiping and scrolling through their socials, you are busy in the remembrance of Allah Jalla Jalalu. That's sign number two. You are a worshipper in times of ease and in times of hardship, in times of happiness and sadness, prosperity, adversity. Your motto in life is salah, dhikr, Quran, qiyam. A sign that Allah has chosen you to be for Him. Sign number three. You have a fearless ability to acknowledge your personal error. There are certain mistakes that we've made in our past that we should have amended 10 years ago. <clears throat> certain people we should have apologized to 15 years ago. Musa alayhi salam was not that man. When he made a mistake, he was quick to say, Astaghfirullah, this is from shaitan. And he would make the changes in his life. When he saw two men fighting, and he underestimated his own strength, and he pushed the Egyptian and the man died. He didn't say, he deserves it, he's a road man, troublesome, always fighting, always getting up to no good. I know what I'm doing, he's in the wrong, no apology from me. This wasn't Musa. He said, هذا من عمل الشيطان. This is from shaitan. إنه عدو مضل مبين. He's an enemy, openly leading people astray. Then he said, Rabbi Ghfirli, my Lord forgive me. So Allah forgave him. Allah is the forgiving and merciful. So this is sign number three to measure yourself against. How do you feel when someone advises you? Are you now thinking as a knee-jerk reaction how to advise him back to give him a taste of his own medicine? How do you feel when you hear a khutbah like this, a dars, a meme, a, a lecture, a talk, whatever it may be, advising you? This is halal, this is haram. This dress, dress is an obligation. This dress is impermissible. This business is halal. This business is haram. How do you feel? If you find yourself accepting the mistake, acknowledging your error, and rushing to make the change, Abshir, good news. That's sign number three in your life that Allah is preparing you to be for Him. Sign number four you have an unbreakable ethic of sabr, patience. Before He left Egypt and after, Musa alayhi salam suffered at every level. وَلَمْ يُرَى إِلَّا صَابِرًا مُحْتَسِبًا Yet he was only ever seen patient. In fact, so great was his sabr, patience, that our Prophet wasallam saw Musa as an example. And when things became tough for him and people harmed him, he would say, رَحِيمَ اللَّهُ أَخِي مُوسَى May Allah have mercy on my brother Musa. قَدْ أُوذِيَ بِأَكْثَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَصَبَرْ He suffered more than this. And he was patient. Patience with the commandments of Allah. Patience with the prohibitions of Allah. Patience with the qadr, the painful decrees of Allah. That's sign number four to measure yourself against. And five, before I sit down, your fifth sign to measure yourself to see whether you are being prepared by Allah to be for Allah is that you have this desire to be of service to others. Musa sees two people fighting. He has to involve himself to settle the dispute. He did this twice. He sees two women who can't push and shove with men to water their animals. So he takes the initiative, brings the animals, water them, hand them over and walks away. Even when he was studying under his teacher and he saw things that he didn't like, he had to say something. Ah, so Musa was a man of ihsan. Excellence, wanting to serve, it's not just about his ambitions and his career and his mirror reflection. Allah says, when he reached his full age of maturity and became a man, we gave him wisdom and knowledge. Why? Because Musa was a man who was of excellence, of service to others. These are five signs to measure yourself against to see whether you are for Allah, by Allah and for Allah. We said number one, a thirst for knowledge. 
Number two, a commitment to ibadah. Number three, a fearless acknowledgement of personal error. Number four, an ethic of sabr, patience. You're not quick to snap. And number five, you have a longing to be of khidmah, of service to others. Muawiyah al qushayri narrated that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Antum mufuna sab'ina ummah. Antum khayruha wa akramuha ala Allah. You, O oh Muslims, he said, are the last of 70 nations Allah has created. Yet in the eyes of Allah, you are the greatest and most noble of all of those nations. But let's address the elephant in the room and be honest. When you hear narrations like this that speaks of our virtue of Muslims, as Muslims, and how Allah loves us as an ummah, you can't help but say, how do we understand the battered nature of our ummah that is being beaten black and blue wherever you look? Wherever you turn to look at the anatomy of this nation, you see nothing but bruises, cuts, wounds, and hemorrhage. You turn to China and you see the plight of the Uyghur Muslims ongoing, the ethnic cleansing of an entire community. Then you turn to Myanmar, Burma, and you see the Rohingyas, their plight is continuing. And you look towards India, towards what seems to be a genocide that is making its way to them. But then you turn to the Muslims of Yemen, and you see a famine that is threatening the existence of the entire region. Then you turn to Syria, a decade-long war crushing our brothers and sisters there. You turn to Saudi Arabia, you see scholars and activists and people of khair lingering in the dungeons of the Gulf. You turn to Philistine, you see corruption at its core, and you see struggle at the other parts and a siege and an illegal occupation. You turn to Gaza, you see your biggest open air prison on planet Earth today. You turn to Al Aqsa and you see our third holiest site being desecrated before the eyes of the international community. Where is this favored nation? How is it that we are these people in the eyes of Allah Jalla Jalalu, yet wherever you look, you see nothing but carnage and pain and suffering and blood? For those who ask how and why, the response is the same as what Musa received from his Lord when he wondered, why am I suffering? He was told, I am preparing you for myself. The same way that the suffering of Musa السلام, was not because Allah hated him or because Allah had abandoned him but because he was being prepared to lead Bani Israel out of Egypt. We are to see our pains in the same light. Allah has not hated us, nor has he abandoned us. These are preparatory events to allow the Muslims to take center stage and to lead humanity. And the process of preparing Musa for leadership is the same process that will apply to us. Why do you think his name was re repeated 183 times in the Quran? Hikmah, wisdom. What was the process of preparing him as a leader? Separated him from his mother. Separating him from the people he loved. And we too will have to be in the process separated from the people we love and the places we love, even if it happens to be Al-Aqsa. But Musa was reunited with the people he loved. And Allah has promised that we sooner or later will be reunited with the people and places we love. The waves of the river Nile that burst into his cot when he was still a suckling child are no different to the waves that bashed the Muslims through the Islamophobic industry all across the world. But the shore of the river Nile was near for Musa. And Allah has promised that our shore is just as near. 
He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحَادُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ فِي الْأَذَلِّينَ Those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, they will be the debased ones. كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَأَغْلِبَنَّ أَنَا وَرُسُلِي إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Allah has already decreed that I, Allah, and my messengers will overcome. We shall prevail. Allah is mighty and Allah is wise.